Online Printers is one of the leading online print companies in Europe. Uh, we are a B2B online print company, that is we sell flyers, uh, posters, business cards, brochures, large format print, promotional articles all over Europe via our online shop. And uh, we also have two subsidiaries, one in the UK, one in Denmark, in Denmark particularly, um, with uh, Lasertruck and Solo Press, who are leading in uh, Nordics uh, and in UK respectively. So with our brands, we're well present all over Europe. No, we're one of the top three players in, in Europe. We have uh, 1,400 employees uh, and some 200 million euro in revenue. Uh, the original company was founded in 1984. It was a normal family print business. And on top of that business, the son of the original founder founded online printers in the online printing business. And um, yeah, he, he was very good in that. And so the company grew from uh, 30 employees in 2004 when online printing was started to now more uh, 1,400 all over Europe. Uh, at that time, people really didn't see the opportunity. Fortunately, Walter Meyer saw the opportunity and um, his, his father, father was also not too convinced, but he said, you take this amount of money and go for it. And um, if the money has run out, then you just forget it. And uh, the money never went out. Uh, there were hard times, certainly, but uh, he grew the business to a really, really big size. So that was a very good idea, although he was very alone. But I think that's, that's typical for an entrepreneur that people start with ideas that are really good, but sometimes they have a hard time that convincing those around them that this is really a good idea. I joined Online Printers uh, four years ago, so now I'm CEO here for four years. Uh, before that, I worked with Siri Color, one of the leaders in photo business, who also has a share in, in uh, the same way of online printing that, that uh, Online Printers is doing. Um, there was responsible of the German business of the German production sites and I also created the first online print offering that Zuri Color had. Um, before that I was two years with Boston Consulting and before that I started with Bertelsmann Avato in the print business uh, where I had the opportunity to lead the pre-press of Mondruk, one of the biggest uh, offset companies in Europe. I uh, led the first steps into CTP production there. It was at that time <laughs> already, when you see my gray hair. <laughs> and, and, um, and I also uh, led the uh, sheet fat printing department there. So yeah, and, and before that um, I studied engineering, uh, spent some time in France, married three kids. And um, yeah, so, so um, when you, it's like with strategy, when you're, when you're moving forward, you're doing things that seem to be right, but when you look backward, it looks like a great strategy. So when you look at me today as CEO of a company that does online print, online printing, uh, a strategy to grow in a, in a strongly growing market, and you have spent time in engineering, in printing, offset printing, uh, in strategy, consulting, uh, and in the online photo business and created an online printing company yourself, it seems to be good preparation for being CEO yeah, of this yeah. company. Um, I think that, that online print is, is uh, dealing with a part of the print industry that uh, has still way to go in its move online. Uh, we think that roughly 10% of the potential commercial printing revenue that could go online is actually online today. So uh, certainly we have to adapt, we have to improve processes, we have to convince people to really go online with their printing needs, but we think that there are huge opportunities for growing in that market. Um, but uh, also not, not to tell the story that everybody should rush to that market because it's such a great opportunity. Um, I think by now the big online players have assembled a set of uh, cost advantages, uh, brand value, online marketing know-how and everything you need for being successful in that business. So that uh, it's th there's a huge opportunity for those that are already big enough to grow with this growing market. But I think it would be really hard for new entrants who would try to get into that market at a much, much smaller scale than we are today. 
in, 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 the, in the beginning, you don't have the scale advantages that we have. We have scale advantages in IT, in marketing, in production, in paper purchasing, and in everything. Um, and when you start with uh, 500,000 euro revenue, you don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So you really must be w w capable of investing and it would take quite a while till you really have a revenue that, that in itself is profitable. And, and in the same time, the profitable big players continue to grow and, and continue to become bigger. I, I, I think there are, there are two, two drivers. One driver is that certainly we take volumes that historically have been done in these 8,000 small print companies and uh, over time these volumes uh, partly move into online print. Um, so, so, so this is, this is one driver and, um, and the second driver is certainly that with the low cost that we have and the low prices that we have, we also offer an opportunity to order print to people who before wouldn't have thought of it. So uh, today when you, when you go to, uh, uh, I always say to, to the, 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 the annual meeting in the kindergarten, um, people might make an invitation that has been printed online. Historically, they would have done that in a copy shop or w however, uh, or, or you wouldn't have had a written invitation at all. So today it's easier and people can, can use things that they didn't before. So I think there we really create growth of the market, not just of our market, but in general of the, of the market of printed products. But the, the stronger driver is uh, to move volumes that are in other printing companies into the cheap and efficient and standardized uh, online printing world. I know a, a little bit of these, these two dimensions uh, have been apparent in the historical development of how online print has been seen by people. Um, the beginning was, oh my God, these terrible online printers, they, cre they, they uh, kill our business. Um, but in the end, I think uh, there was a saying uh, in the beginning of 2000, everything that can be digital will be digital and everything that can go online will go online. So in the end, um, we are drivers in a rather natural development of online print and online ordering. That's something that is happening everywhere and it's also happening in the printing industry. Um, so that was only seen in the first years of online print. Um, today, when I go to a conference and I speak to printers, most of them really see us as partners and most of them really say, yeah, in the beginning we were against you, but now we have understood it's a historical movement. Uh, certainly you are driving that movement, but it will happen anyway. If it's you or somebody else, it's a natural development and we have to find way of, of using the opportunities that are in that. And I think these small printers, they have a high local relevance. They have many customers they know. They do more than just printing for these customers. They may do creation. They may help them in organizing all the things that they need to print. And, and all that is added value that we cannot supply from afar, but that's what they do regionally with their customers. And then they, from their point of view, they just outsource the production and in that increase their own margin, reduce the necessity to invest in new machinery and, and so on. So for them, uh, the, the business model changes, but we can then be a partner to them. And I think in other industries, maybe um, those, the, the, the Zalandos, uh, they don't sell to the local uh, clothing shop. They sell to the customer and say, local clothing shops, we don't need them. Um, like Oliver Zambia uh, said once, uh, if the internet had existed all along, there wouldn't be any shops in the world, which is a bit, little bit crazy, I think. <laughs> but but um, th that's the way they see the business. We think there is added value in the, in the work that uh, local printers are doing to their customers but the added value is not in the production because there we are more efficient. Certainly there are, in, in the end, I think we, we are in a market that changes. With the digitization, many, many things change and all printers have to redefine their business model. And there are those that redefine it in a way that they say, okay, with these standard products, I don't wanna do my business anyway so they move into specialized products, specialized post-processing, they work in, um, in uh, supply chain 
structures, they do warehousing, they do supply of material, not just printed, but everything else for their customer. They integrate into the ERP system of their customers. So they do many things that take them out of this pure price comparison of the product, which, which is a good move and, and is their way of, of digitizing their business. And there are others that say, mm, maybe that's not what we want to do, or maybe that's something for the companies of 30, 40, 50 employees, but not the solution for those with five employees. They have to search other solutions. And I think those that today say, oh, I still hate them, they are still our enemies, maybe they are the ones that are not willing to really rethink their own business model. I think it, it has been natural from the beginning or it has happened from the beginning and it, I think it's more actively communicating how people are using our service because we have worked for printers all along. Yeah. There have been printers who understood rather early that printing uh, 2000 flyers is not their 40. So uh, it's more that we say okay look at our customer base look how many People, companies, printers, also people in the graphic arts use us. In which way do they use us? What is the value that we give to them? And then first trying to communicate that and secondly trying to get even better in being a service provider to them. For that you have to understand it but in the end you also have to communicate yeah. what you're doing there because hopefully there will be some more who will also like that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, certainly the, the challenge of growing is, is always adding um, new production capacities to, to really keep, keep track with the volumes that keep coming in. Um, but also uh, always understanding where there are the new opportunities from the new size that you have reached. Because with each size you have new challenges in leading the company, which organization you need and so on, but also new opportunities of things that you can do that you might not have done at half the size. So it, it develops um, all the time and certainly uh, the bigger you are, the f more new customers you have to create. So the better you have to become in marketing yourself, in, in getting in uh, new customers, in, in online marketing and in everything you do for really attracting new customers to your business model. Um, I think technology for us is, is broader than just print technology. It's technology in, in the online world, in the online marketing world, in the um, way our website works, in the way we understand customer behavior, all that is technology. The automization that comes with that is all technology. So there's a big software part that is customer facing technology. That is very, very important because I think uh, there is, is the, 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 the new efficiency dimension that we have to work on. The, the, um, the efficiency of, of our um, production is one part, but the efficiency and ease of use of the customer side, that's something that, that needs to be strongly developed. And then certainly in, in production also uh, using new technology is, is important. Uh, but you've seen today uh, in the visit, we also use uh, many machines that are high-tech machines but that are not dedicated technology but still technology everybody could buy and just the way we use them the way we organize the workflows the way we have the software around it that really makes a very big difference but I think um, the bigger we grow the more areas of production will then be open for technology in terms of integrated production lines, full automation and, and all that stuff so that then we get more and more into dedicated technology that only we and maybe two or three others in the world can really use because nobody else has enough volume to really use that kind of technology. That's something that I see now coming for the future.